Forget upgrading your graphics card. This is the biggest upgrade you could possibly make to your PC setup. Yes, the hype around OLEDs isn't without merit, and with the help of AOC, we've finally got one in our setup now, so I can showcase how good they truly are. You might be asking, are OLEDs truly worth the hype? And I can answer that in one word for you, yes. They are so much better than their LCD counterparts, mainly down to one thing. Each pixel in an OLED display is self-illuminating, which means they can turn themselves off and you don't need a backlight. And this allows for perfect blacks, therefore rich contrast and nice and punchy saturation as well due to their wide color gamuts. Oh, and because of this, you can actually have functional HDR now. Gone are the days of having washed out and horrible non-functional HDR because with OLED, it, it can be done, believe me. Also, these benefits extend to video and photo editors, but there is a risk of burning, but more on that in a minute, and media consumption, and last but not least, video gaming. But you might be sat there thinking that OLED monitors are super expensive, but with budget ones like the AOC AG276QZD2, I might have remembered the monitor name off by heart, that is, an achievement of it in of itself. But for £400, you'll get a 27 inch 1440p 240Hz QD OLED display. And let me tell you now, just because it's a budget QD OLED, it doesn't mean it's bad because I've had an absolutely phenomenal time gaming on this thing as it's been absolutely perfect. Is it the fastest QD OLED to ever exist? Certainly not, but I think 240 hertz is more than enough for like 95% of PC gamers. It's certainly more than enough for me because I mainly play story games and most of the time I'm never hitting anywhere near 240 hertz. But I still get all the benefits of QD OLED, like the infinite contrast ratio, the inky deep blacks and HDR, that works. I've seen a few people say that the HDR implementation on the AG276 QZD2, there we go, remembered it again, is not particularly too brilliant and it's pretty washed out. I found this in my not very scientific testing that it gets on perfectly fine. I was playing Battlefield 1 with HDR enabled, which still kind of looks better than 90% of modern AAA games, and I thought it looked absolutely fantastic. If you do some calibration in Windows and in game, it still looks pretty good, and could I say that the colors could look a bit more punchy? Probably, but I don't particularly like oversaturated games. I'd prefer them to look a bit more realistic. I also played Cyberpunk 2077 with HDR enabled, and I thought it looked fantastic here as well. But to be honest, my experience with HDR displays is pretty limited, but I've got absolutely zero problems with how it looks on this monitor and I'm pretty happy. There is one thing I wish for, and this is not a problem created by AOC or any of the monitor manufacturers, it's a Microsoft problem. To my knowledge, in Windows, there's no auto detect for HDR metadata, so you have to manually enable HDR in Windows and then enable it in your game. But on Xbox, for instance, it just automatically enables it when it detects HDR content, which is a lot more convenient. I know some video editors will master their footage in HDR, but at least having a setting for this enabled for content consumers is kind of important, I'd like to say. Other than that, I use SDR quite a lot in games like Minecraft and more competitive shooters where a monitor like this is very valid. The near instant response times of 0.03 milliseconds enable absolutely fantastic motion clarity. And this is very important because IPS is, it's still quite good and it can get to around five milliseconds but some of the fast TNs are a bit quicker than that, but none of them come close to OLED. Because of the inherent nature of the self-illuminating pixels, they can go from gray to gray very quickly. Now at 240 hertz, I think this is fantastic, but if you go up to 360 or even 500 hertz, which some new QD OLEDs are starting to feature, I believe this response time is going to get even more important. And maybe to the point where eSports pros start to ditch TM panel monitors altogether and just go to QD OLED instead. Now, I'm not a professional eSports player by any means. I could just be talking absolute rubbish here, but I truly think that QD OLED is certainly the future 
even for competitive gamers. Now on the complete other end of gaming and media consumption is productivity. And this is where a lot of people say that QD OLED and regular OLED monitors are not the best, mainly down to something called burning. If you're displaying static elements on an OLED display, odds are it will likely burn in. Now, this is something that you'll probably be doing with productivity as you'll have, say, Premiere Pro open or just two apps open side by side. And it has been known that people have got burning down the middle of the monitor when they snap like their web browser and email side to side. AOC and other OLED brands have put mitigations in place to reduce the rate of burning. OLED care on AOC monitors includes both taskbar and logo dimming, and it also has a pixel refresher, which sort of goes through and cleans the pixels of burning, if that makes sense, I'm probably butchering that, but that runs every four or so hours. And there's also a feature called screensaver, which dims the screen after a few minutes of inactivity, just to reduce the rate of burning. Failing all of that though, AOC provide a three year warranty which includes OLED burning, which is great to see. But outside of that, you could change some of your habits like hiding the taskbar in Windows for instance, so there's absolutely zero chance of that burning in now because it's barely ever there. And if you need to display static elements quite often, you could get a second LCD monitor, which is what I've done because I've got my script up on here right now, which is Microsoft Word, therefore it's static. Outside of that, you can put stuff on there like Excel and your emails and such. But back to productivity, out of the box, the AOC AG27 6QZD2 has some of the most fantastic SDR calibration I've seen out of the box. Yes, it needed slight tweaking, but outside of that, it was absolutely brilliant. I've edited a couple of videos on this now, and I've also edited quite a few photos, and I found it to be absolutely brilliant and it matches up to my iPhone quite well as this is also an OLED display. So the fact that it matches up to this, especially for photos, very good. One thing I do have to mention is the text clarity with QD OLED. People say it's not the best, especially compared to IPS and uh, they're not particularly lying. It looks like you've got a bit of fringing around the outside of it. And admittedly, this is with Windows clear type or clear text don't know what to call it. Anyways, that's enabled. And it still looks a bit like there's chromatic aberration around the, the text, so to speak. It's not too distracting and the text is still more than legible. So this is a minor problem, if anything. And this is not down to this monitor in particular, it's down to the panel technology. So for gaming, media consumption and productivity, should you buy an OLED monitor? For the first two, I can certainly recommend one. They're getting quite affordable now with the AG27 6 QZD2 becoming ever so affordable at just £400 here in the UK, which is kind of fantastic for the monitor you get for it. I would say if you've got the budget for it, go for it. OLED is absolutely fantastic. If you're creative and you do a bit more video editing and productivity, I would say this is where OLED becomes a bit muddy. You're at risk of burning more so compared to gaming and media consumption because you've got static elements on the screen and the text clarity isn't particularly the most brilliant, but this model had fantastic calibration out of the box. So that's got to be known right there. So as a whole, I do 100% recommend OLED monitors in 2025. And I still think it's one of the biggest PC gaming upgrades you could ever make. But if they're out of budget for you and you want to check out an IPS 1440p monitor, check this one out in this video up here. With that being said, I'll catch you in the next one.